you can study something called the capital asset pricing model. And for actually several decades, this was sort of the reigning academic way to arrive at a discount rate. It's not as much used now. It's been partially debunked, but there are still some adherents. But conceptually, it's actually beautiful because it really teases out and articulates some key concepts, even if it doesn't actually work in practice. So let's take a quick look, and we're going to get into this more on the next slide. So don't freak out if you, this looks scary right now. We're going to break it down. It's, in a nutshell, the risk-free rate, which we're abbreviating as KRF, plus a number called beta, which is basically how much the market, the stock zigs compared to the market times what's called the market risk premium, which is simply the expected return of the market minus that risk-free rate. In other words, what is that differential? Multiply that differential times the extent that a certain stock zigs when the market zags. But let's look in more detail at CAPM. So KRF, that is the risk-free rate. KM is simply the expected stock market return. So right now I might say 3% risk-free rate and you know 9 or 10% stock market return, expected. Beta, covariance, okay, a scary looking word and a scary looking symbol, but it's not so scary. All beta is, by the way, the market has a beta of one by definition, but all beta is, is how much the stock zigs when the market zags. And we typically look at historical numbers to see this. So if the market was up 10% and the stock was up 20%, market was down 5%, stock was down 10%, that stock would have a beta of two meaning it's essentially twice as variable as the market. If the market went up 5%, the stock only went up 2.5%, market went down 10%, stock only dropped 5%, it would have a beta of 0.5, half as variable. If the market was up 10%, stock was down 10%, market's down 20%, stock is up 20%, it would have a beta of negative one. It would be actually inversely correlated that it's extremely rare but it's also extremely valuable because it's, it's good for diversification to have something that zigs when the rest of your portfolio zags. And finally, we have the market risk premium, which is simply the expected return of the market minus the risk-free rate. 